last time we looked at the Mongoose PT-26, we established firmly that the fork was hot garbage. And the build quality was about what you'd expect from a $200 dirt jumper from Walmart. It was clanky oh, and the fork flexed terrible. like a yoga instructor. But any bike is better than no bike, right? All right, so we're gonna change this fork out. I've decided that I'm going to go with a rigid fork and for one reason and one reason only, cost. You know, going out and trying to experiment with some cheap Amazon fork or putting on an expensive, uh, you know, dirt jump fork, even, even a cheap Manitou, which are still excellent forks at $300, you're just putting good money after bad. So we're gonna put a rigid fork on this, see how it rides. Uh, if it makes sense and then uh, then we'll see if there's anything else we want to do if it makes the bike better the bike is hefty it's almost 34 pounds which is really heavy for a dirt jumper because the dirt jumpers don't have a cassette they don't have front derailleurs back rear derailleurs they don't have any of that stuff it's just a sprocket in the front and a gear in the back and, and another one in the a little gear in the back um, there's not a lot of things to add weight on a dirt jumper. There's not even a front brake on it. So 34 pounds for this bike is absurdly heavy. Uh, we're gonna see if that makes a difference by switching out to a rigid fork. The rigid fork I have is a Pro Molly fork, so it's gonna be pretty strong in steel, and it's, it's made by Gusset, and it's, it runs about $90. Uh, we're gonna try that, see how, how it works out, and uh, we'll take it out to the pump track again, maybe try and hit some jumps with it, and see what happens. So let's get started. We're making the front fork rigid, eliminating a cheap but still bouncy part on this bike. So now what'll happen is we'll probably start seeing other flaws come out in the design. Let's get this bike back out on the pump track and see how it rides now. We headed back to Big Marsh Bike Park to run it through the pump track and hit some jumps. The rigid fork made this bike a lot better on the pump track. I still have serious doubts about this bike. Putting good money after bad is not my style. I've considered several upgrades based on your suggestions. Before I move down that path, I want to see if anything at all breaks on this bike. especially on a bike meant to go airborne on a regular basis. When working in this price point, the buyer can't afford to risk throwing away money. A rigid can be had for cheap and is guaranteed reliable. We headed to the jump lines only to find out that they were closed. Luckily, there are some scattered jumps on the single track, which was open. The bike is heavy, and you feel it when jumping. Oh yeah, let's see how much this bike weighs after the upgrade. It's time to play Weigh That Bike. Well, now it looks like it weighs even more. That's just great. Turns out the flimsy fork doesn't weigh much. Out of curiosity, I weighed a few other mountain bikes to put this in perspective. Everything from the budget Polygon Extrata to my full suspension Enduro bike all weighed less. My Spank Tweet Chromoly Dirt Jumper is actually 5 pounds lighter. The weight is definitely a factor and you can feel it when riding. A decent dirt jumper should easily come in at less than 30 pounds. One pleasant surprise on this bike are the tires. They're weird gray walls, but the tread pattern is identical to the Kenda Small Block 8. I wouldn't be surprised if they are Kendas in disguise. Mongoose does in fact spec Kenda tires on a few of their more expensive bikes. Original or knockoff, they are a welcome addition. They rolled fast and had good traction even on the loose dirt at Big Marsh. A not so bright spot, the crank set. So just after a little bit of riding, that vibrated loose. Brand new bike technically, hasn't seen a lot of use. 
Bottom bracket's made out of plastic. You trust that when you're jumping? Yeah, I'm uh, kind of done with it. It was tight when I left home, but after a few hours of subpar jumping, riding the pump track, feels the cranks good. vibrated loose. Luckily, I caught it while pedaling around on the gravel, or this would have ended badly. So now I've lost confidence in the cranks. I mean, any cranks can vibrate loose, but I've never had one do it this quickly. At closer look, the bolts are cheap, the bottom bracket on this bike is made of plastic. I don't see these lasting very long. And if you don't have confidence in your equipment, you won't have much confidence riding. I adjusted the brakes to grab a little better, but they still suck. With the new fork, this is roughly a $300 bike now. I need to find a crank set and bottom bracket, which will probably cost me another $100 or more. Hopefully we can reuse the chain ring. And that will make it a $400 Walmart dirt jump bike. And I haven't even touched the cockpit or the brakes yet. So far, we've established that the two most critical parts on this bike, the fork and the cranks, need immediate replacement. I'm on the fence about changing the brakes. Well, I hope you found this review helpful or at least enjoyed the video. If so, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and share it with a friend. The fork upgrade definitely improved the PT26, but the more I ride this bike, the more I want to replace parts. And at what point does this become a waste of money? Or has it already? I hope you enjoyed this leg of my journey. Perfect. Thanks for watching. Oh, oh, oh man, that was close.